Very good evening and welcome to Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. I am Ifoma Ojinta. Vice President Yemi Oshibajo is presiding over the first economic management meeting of President Buhari's second term, themed Next Level Agenda. Budget issues in attendance are Ministers of Finance, Budget National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, Industry Trade Investment, Richard Adebayo. Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed. Works Housing, Babatunde Fashala. Budget National Planning State, Clement Ike. And the Minister of Petroleum State, Timipre Silva. Also in the meeting are the CBN Governor, NNPC GMD, FIRS Chairman, DG Budget, DGDMO, Special Advisors on Economic Matters, among others. The meeting opens with a review of the 2019 budget's implementation. In response to the rising tensions, conflict and other acts of criminality, as well as their impacts on Africa's development aspiration, Japan has introduced a new approach to peace and stability on the continent called NAPSA. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, who announced this at the opening of the 7th Tokyo International Conference on African Development in Yokohama, said the new idea is aimed at fostering Africa's prosperity. President Mohamed Buhari is leading Nigeria's delegation to the conference. State House correspondent Adamu Sambo, who is putting the report together, will bring you details in our subsequent bulletins. Worried over the closure of the Nigeria Benue border by the federal government and its consequences on his country's economy, President Patrice Talon of Benue Republic has visited President Muhammad Buhari to seek for understanding and possible intervention. The crucial engagement took place on the sidelines of the Tokyo International Conference on African Development in Yokohama, Japan. State House correspondent Adamu Sambo reports that the Nigerian leader also met President Ramaphosa over the killings of Nigerians in South Africa. The clamor to bring to fruition the proposed plan by the federal government to review the revenue allocation formula has been receiving and trained up diverse positions in the different strata of the society. Guests on NTA's flagship program, Good Morning Nigeria, say objectivity should be the watchword. Patricia Esamiluba reports. The federal government is set to review the revenue allocation formula. The current revenue allocation formula is put at 52.68% for federal, 26.72% for states, and 20.60% for local governments, which is in a vertical order. The plan is expected to allow the states and the local governments get more money to expand and increase the scope of revenue collection. Kano State Governor Abdullahi Umar Ganduje's perspective aligns with the plan, which he said will allow the states to take ownership of exploring and driving their own matters of development. The vertical uh, distribution, the horizontal distribution, and also the derivation issue. These three areas need to be examined seriously in order to have a fair distribution of revenue. The Senate Deputy Chief Whip, Ali Yusabi Abdullahi, who spoke from the legislative angle, emphasized transparency and political will, just as the former chairman, Kogi State, Shaba Ibrahim, suggests a holistic review that is in consideration to all the tiers of government. 
whatever system we put in place. That attitude that we carry into governance or followers is key to bring in a resolution to all the issues we are discussing. Because of the humongous amount available at their disposal, you have so many idle agencies here and there that don't have any bearing with the life of the common man. Chairman, Revenue Mobilization and Fiscal Commission, Elias Mbam, in his submission, stressed the need for the review to be done, taking into cognizance the current situations in the country, which is totally different from when the allocation formula was created. The desert encroachment has increased. Erosion problem has increased. Flooding. Flooding has increased. Take security. Security wasn't such an issue then, but now it's a major issue. They made submissions pointing to the fact that there is a disconnect between the different levels of government that needs to be addressed for clearer responsibility and optimal performance. Patricia A. Semiluba, NTA News. Nigeria has continued to work towards reversing the figures of a 2017 national survey on the quality and integrity of public services, indicating that more than 30% of services users pay bribe of about 400 billion naira annually. The Anti-Corruption Academy of Nigeria is waiting the charge. 83 million bribes were said to be paid yearly in Nigeria at average rate of 5,300 naira per bribe. This may sound much right, but small compared to what is lost to illicit financial flows as Nigeria is placed second in the world in a survey conducted in 2017 by Public Administration of Corruption Index. But this narrative is changing as relevant authorities and the anti-corruption agencies continue to come up with strategies that will combat the menace. Encouraged by the present administration's tough stance against corruption, there is optimism among the experts here that light will be seen at the end of the tunnel. It means that from 2000 to 2015, we were not following a national anti-corruption strategy. I have to credit this government. As soon as they came in, that was the first focus and issue they addressed. And so you, every sector knows where you should be in. There's no day that there's nothing to report. There's always something about corruption. Now, some people will interpret that to mean corruption is increasing rather than corruption is being dealt with. So we need to clear that fog that you can either see the glass as half full or half empty. But clearly, we're not where we were before. A policy document on how to eradicate election corruption to promote good governance was part of the issues this meeting discussed. A federal high court in Abuja, presided over by Justice Nkonye Maha, has declined hearing on the application challenging the continuous detention of Omole Yeshoware by the Department of Security Service. She ruled that hearing the application will amount to her reviewing the order given by the Court of Equal Jurisdiction. Austin Anyebe reports. The application was filed by the defendant Omole Yeshoware challenging his continuous detention by the DSS as it is a violation of his fundamental human rights. But when the case was mentioned, counsel to the defendant Femi Falono, senior advocate of Nigeria, attempted moving the application but was refused by the judge who said allowing the application will undermine the earlier order given by Justice Taiwo Taiwo of the same federal high court. She ruled that since Justice Taiwo has ordered his detention for 45 days for further investigation as requested by the DSS. It is not competent to overrule a decision of his court with cognate powers, hence refer them back to Justice Taiwo as he is also a vacation judge. Counsel to Omoloye Sowori, Femi Falano, who maintains that Order 26, Rule 9 of the Federal High Court Civil Rule gives the judge the power to hear the matter, reacts to the ruling. We're going to meet with our client today in order to take a decision on the matter. But in the interim, we are back to the Honorable Justice Taiwo as per the ruling of the court. Counsel to the State Security, O.J. Odu, declined comments. Meanwhile, 
the case between the Attorney General of the Federation versus Islamic Movement of Nigeria, IMN, where the movement is challenging its prescription order is fixed for 11th of September 2019 to enable parties file necessary processes from the Federal High Court Abuja. I'm Austin Anyebe, NT News. The All Progressives Congress has released lists of successful aspirants that will participate in the August 29th governorship primaries in Kogi and Bayelsa states. Salihu Abdullahi reports. The National Working Committee of the All Progressive Congress, after its deliberation on the report of the screening and appeal committees for the party's Kogi and Bayelsa governorship aspirants, has concluded to adopt indirect primaries to elect candidates ahead of the November 16 governorship polls in the two states. In a statement by the APC National Publicity Secretary, Larry Isaonilu, the party has relied on its guidelines and the provisions of the Electoral Act and cleared nine aspirants out of the 16 of them that have obtained nomination and expression of interest forms to participate in the August 29th governorship primary in Kogi State. Those cleared after a comprehensive review of the screening and appeal committees by the National Working Committee are the incumbent governor of Kogi State, Yahaya Bello, Adiza Iyoma Ibrahim, Yahaya Odidi Audu, Sani Lulu Abdullahi, Engineer Abubakar Bashir, Engineer Dallami Umar Muhammad, Yakubu Muhammad, Hassan Abdullahi, and Ekele Aishat Blessing, while Professor Muhammad Saidu Onailo, former Chief of Naval Staff Admiral Osman Oibe Jibril, two children of late Prince Abubakar Audu, Mustafa Mona Audu, Muhammad Abubakar Onuku Audu, Rukayat Ibrahim, General Patrick Adenu Akpa, and Baba Tunde Ayokunle Irukera made the list of seven aspirants that were not cleared. In a similar statement, the party says it has upheld the report of the screening and appeal committees for the Bayasa governorship aspirants. Out of the seven governorship aspirants, only one of them, Dr. Briai Franklin, was not cleared to participate in the party's governorship primary, while the remaining six, including Aganaba Priye Stephen, Senator Henekin Lukwobiri, Prince Ebitimi Christopher Angbare, Bisei Nsirim Puer, Leon David, and Professor Maureen Etebo were cleared. The Screening and Appeal Committee's report states that those aspirants who are not cleared are guilty of various offenses against the party's rules and electoral act. In Abuja, Salihu Abdullahi, NTA News. Lagos is our first port of call, and here is Hingino with a follow-up report on X Swift's response and the very latest stories from that zone. Hello, Hingino. Thank you, Ifoma, and welcome to Lagos. The ongoing joint border security exercise called named X Swift Response enters its eighth day of operation. Mohamed Abdul Kadri has a preview of the exercise. This is Semeland border in the southwest Nigeria. It is one of the four geopolitical zones where exercise swift response being coordinated by the National Security Advisor are ongoing. According to the Nigeria Customs Service Public Relations Officer, Joseph Atta, in a telephone interview, the operation has a geopolitical spread across all borders. Atta said the exercise being led by the Nigeria Customs Service and the Nigeria Immigration Service is in collaboration with the armed forces of Nigeria, the police and intelligence agencies. Its overall objective, according to him, is to promote interagency cooperation and increase preparedness to address transborder security challenges, especially to block unapproved corridors. A security expert, Dr. Ono, applauds the initiative of the federal government in this regard. It shows that the federal government is uh, sitting up uh, in terms of um, the security challenges we are having um, in the border areas, uh, southwest border, northwest border, and uh, of course certainly the problems of the northeast border are very well known, and then uh, certainly southeast borders also. Implementing the operational directive for the exercise, movement of migrants 
possessing valid documents are unhindered through the borders. In Lagos, Muhammad Abdel Kadri, NTA News. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, says its collaboration with the Federal Bureau of Investigation, FBI, has resulted in over 200 arrests, convictions, and recovery of large number of cars and other items. The Lagos Zonal Head of the Commission, Mohamed Rabu, said this during an interactive session with the media in Lagos. Yabo Waleeri was there. Mohamed Rabu, while speaking on the activities of the Commission, said from 2018 to date, the sustained operation of the Commission on perpetrators of computer-related frauds had led to various arrests, convictions, and recovery of properties suspected to have been acquired through proceeds of crime. The recent collaboration with FBI, according to Rabu, has however led to more arrests, out of which some suspects have been charged to court, some are undergoing trial, while others are still under investigation. Also recovers a sum of 314,000 US dollars and another sum of about 373 million naira traced to various commercial banks. Also, over 80 cases are still under investigation from the EFCC FBI joint operations. While also appealing to Nigerians to see the fight against crime as a collective responsibility, Rabo assured that the Commission will do all at its disposal to ensure a cyber crime free society. In Lagos, Iyabo Wale Eri, NTA News. 153 Nigerians who are illegal migrants in Libya arrived at the Murtala Mohammed Airport, Lagos, in the early hours of Wednesday. Aboladi Salami reports. The returnees who came aboard Tripoli Airline Boeing 737 comprised 83 males, 70 females, 7 children, and 9 infants. On arrival, they were subjected to proper documentations as well as medical checks by the officials of the National Commission for Refugees, Migrants, and Internally Displaced Persons in collaboration with other humanitarian agencies. The Southwest Zona Head National Commission for Refugees, Margaret Okwebu, enjoined the returnees to stay and contribute their quota towards national development. They should learn that there is nothing that is impossible because even some of the returnees who have come back, have come back to start businesses and they are doing very, very well. Maybe they needed that push or they needed that experience to come back and appreciate home. Some of the returnees share their experiences. The place is not too stable for us because even that water, there are people that are used to cross to go to wherever they are going, Europe, is not good. People are dying. They are dying mostly. Many things. They cash you, put you for prison, do this one for you, buy you, sell you, pay money for burger, they see my treat you. A lie. Alhamdulillah, I still come back with my life today. Like for you, going to Libya, it's like you just, you are embarking on a suicide mission. It's better for you to start something here because it is only those that embark on the journey that know that the Libya is another earth. It is expected that with the creation of the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, more Nigerians who are stranded in Libya and other foreign countries will be brought back to their fatherland. In Lagos, Aboladi Salami, NTA News. That our contribution from Lagos nationwide continues after this commercial break. Stay with us. As part of his vision of developing a core of well-trained workforce to sustain the fight against corruption in Nigeria, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, in conjunction with the Nigerian Defense Academy, NDA, is set to mark the personal parade of cadets of the EFCC Detective Superintendent Course 8 from the Nigerian Defense Academy, Kaduna, which will take place on Saturday, August 31, 2019, at the Nigerian Defense Academy, NDA Parade Ground, Ribadu Campus, Kaduna, time, 8.30 in the morning. The event shall be preceded by a cocktail party the ND 
EPA Cadets Mess, Ribadu Campus, Kaduna, on Friday, August 30, 2019. Time is 7 o'clock in the evening. Reviewing Officer, His Excellency, President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Muhammadu Buhari, Chief Host, Governor of Kaduna State, His Excellency, Governor Nasir El Rufai. For further inquiries, please contact 0803-314-6970 or 0812 Please note that both events are strictly by invitation. They are there at the crack of dawn. They are there busy preparing while we rise for our day. They are there silently, guarding, waiting, listening, and watching. They are there ready in the sky above and the waters below, in the blistering heat of the day, in the dead of night, willing, indefatigable, determined in the defense of the sovereignty of our country. They are our first line of defense and our last. They who have paid the ultimate price in defending us. They are fathers and uncles. They are mothers and sisters and girlfriends and boyfriends. They are brothers and cousins and best friends and neighbors. They are classmates, colleagues, and citizens of this nation. They are our defenders and deserve our respect, our prayers, our thoughts. Nigeria, please support our armed forces. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Please, did you hear that? Uh, of course I did. That is village and master tune. Eh? So, Auntie Amebo was not gossiping then? Village and master is celebrating 50 years. 50? Already? This is not a joke. It is a national celebration. NTA and village and master family are commemorating 50 years. Hey, 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 please, tell me, when is our golden jubilee? Uh, it is from the 8th to 11th of October, 2019. <laughs> I have to go and get ready. It's time to party. <laughs> we men, we men. But we men will be there too. You can follow us on all our social media platforms, Facebook at NTA Network News, Instagram at NTA Network, Twitter at NTA News Now, YouTube at NTA News Online, or visit www.nta.ng. For live streaming, visit www.nta.ng slash live. Now, you can stay updated on the go, be it on your TV, iPhone, laptop, or iPad, or download the NTA mobile application from your Play Store or App Store. NTA, you can't beat the rich. Welcome back. Senate President Ahmed Ibrahim Lawal has visited six local government areas under his constituency in northern Yobe State, where he commiserated with recent victims of flood disasters and fire outbreak in Nguru Market. Mustafa Yusuf reports that this is his maiden visit to the state since his inauguration as Senate President in June this year. It was indeed a cheering homecoming to the Senate President Ahmed Ibrahim Lawal an indigenous of Gasho Tan, headquarters of Bode local government area of Yobe State. At Unguru Town, the Senate President visited the Central Market and donated 5 million naira to traders who suffered losses as a result of fire outbreak. This is in addition to sympathizing with the victims of flood disasters in Afunori and Zongon Shanu in Guru local government, as well as those in Tagali in Bode and Karaswa local government areas. The Senate President, Ami Ibrahim Lawan, and Yobe State Governor, May Malabuni, agreed to work together and other relevant federal government agencies to provide immediate and long-term support to people affected by the recent flood disasters in the state. We, we know that so much distractions have taken place uh, within this local government, by the local government, and we are already uh, trying to see how we can help the affected communities. Uh, my office has already written to NEMA uh, for immediate uh, delivery of uh, some relief to the people that are affected. That's why we are here to see to ourselves what happened and to assess it and to take necessary measures to address the situation. The President of the Nantes Assembly was also on hand holding a stakeholders meeting in all areas visited where he assured people of his resolve 
to sustain and consolidate on initiatives such as increasing number of tertiary institution sponsorship to qualify candidate to 1,000 from 500, as well as facilitating other meaningful development. I am so happy, so pleased, uh, I'm very grateful uh, to the people of my senatorial district for the very warm and arousing reception that I received in all the three local governments that I have visited so far. The visit did not end without the Senate President Ahmed Ibrahim Lawan meeting with royal fathers as he was at the palaces of emirs of Nguru, Badi, Machina and Iswari to appreciate them and their people for their support to President Muhammad Buhari and his Senate Presidency. In Damatru, I am Mustafa Isu Musa, NTA News. 25 out of the 30 states predicted by the Nigerian Meteorological Services Agency to witness high risk of floods have already been ravaged by the disaster with many casualties. Red Cross Society of Nigeria disclosed this while interacting with journalists on the 2019 flood response plans. Ilyasu Ali Yakubu reports. 206 persons in 108 communities have been affected, which resulted in the death of more than 70 people in the affected states, while three persons are still missing in the ravaging floods that has continued to displace communities across the country. This interaction with the Nigerian Red Cross Society and the journalists is geared towards identifying better ways of mitigating the floods across the country. The Red Cross Society says even though the 2018 flood response by the society was a huge success, but due to the dynamics of the disaster, the 2019 flood response may take a new approach. But currently our appeal, our proposal, we are looking for funds from our fellow Nigerians, from government, from public organization. Well, effort to stem the tide of calamities in country, you know, should definitely be supported by, by, by every person, you know. So government have to enact certain laws that will stop people from settling in some of these flood prone areas deliberately. The Nigerian Red Cross Society volunteers have been actively involved in assisting affected communities through search and rescue, first aid, evacuation and provision of psychosocial support services. In Abuja, Ilyasu Aliakubu, NTA News. Meanwhile, Nigeria is seeking the support of international development partners towards actualization of the National Action Plan to end open defecation by 2025 and bring water sanitation and hygiene to all Nigerians by 2030. The Minister of Water Resources, Suleiman Adamu, made the plea at the 2019 Water Week in Stockholm, Sweden. Musbao and Wahab reports. Water and sanitation sector has since been declared as an emergency by President Mohamed Buhari, an action that the Minister of Water Resources, Suleiman Adamu, says has demonstrated high political commitment. He told the global audience that Nigeria's government is also making conscious decisions to open up opportunities in the Nigerian wash sector to the international development community to support the efforts through establishment of new partnerships in development cooperation and investment for the development of requisite skills, competencies, technologies and financial systems. Nigeria's session of the World Water Week had the theme open for business, building partnership for the revitalization of Nigeria wash sector. The minister on behalf of Nigeria also signed a memorandum of understanding with chief executive of Water Aid on new partnership. Muspal, then we'll have NC News. Nigeria's former Minister of Environment and currently United Nations Deputy Secretary General Amina Mohammed has assured Nigeria of more support from the United Nations in the area of mitigating climate change and other environment related challenges. The UN Deputy Scribe gave the assurance when she visited the Federal Ministry of Environment. There's a lot to build on. Uh, there's a good ministry in place and lots of hard-working people. So the two ministers, I believe, will do well. And ours in the UN is to support you, particularly when it uh, affects climate change and the agenda for climate action. We'll do whatever we can to pick up from where she left because she has done a tremendous job 
doing something here at the ministry. And Abubakar in Medugri has more stories on Nationwide. Hello, Abubakar. Hello, Ifoma. It's good to see you, and thank you for joining us in Medugri. Borno State Government has reiterated commitment towards completing all ongoing projects initiated by the previous administration. Governor Babagana Umara made this known during a meeting with the newly inaugurated commissioners at the Government House, Medugri. Mohamed Goni reports. Professor Babagana Umara said his administration will provide maximum support and cooperation to the commissioners to enable them to implement policies and projects that will improve the quality and living standard of the people. The governor further directed commissioners to liaise with the secretary to the state government and the chief of staff for an articulated budget of their ministries in 2020. He thanked members of the executive council for accepting to serve under his administration and charged them to work as a team for the well-being and development of the state. Briefing journalists at the end of the meeting, Information Commissioner Babakura Abajato pointed out that the governor said what the state needs now is the provision of security to lives and property and charged them to work seriously to achieve that. And budget is all about planning and therefore I think we will try as much as possible to see that we will prioritize our programs and projects so that uh, within the shortest possible time the much expected results will be will come into fruition. The Information Commissioner, while stressing the role of the media in any government, called on all working journalists in the state to give maximum support to the Zulu led administration. In Mairuguri, Mahmoud Goni, NTA News. In a bid to improve effective communication in government affairs, a three day training for unified service staff in the local government system is holding in Mairuguri, the Borno state capital. Jesse Tafida has the rest of the story. The workshop, which is targeting about 160 participants from 27 local government areas across the state, has secretaries, directors, local government key officers and information officers as participants. It is aimed at strengthening the capacity of participants to be more familiar with communication in their various places of work. Chairman Borno State Local Government Civil Service Commission, Senisoka Kamala Miale, said one of the core mandates of the commission is to train and retrain local government staff to ensure productivity. He expressed optimism that the training will go a long way in assisting the participants in knowing how best to improve the communication services and urge the trainees to take advantage of the knowledge acquired and put into use. The success of any nation depends on its civil service. So government has to do something. They should also, the civil service must wake up uh, and do their work well. There were papers presented during the training by various resource persons. In my degree, Jesse Tafida, NTA News. And that's a contribution from my degree. Ifoma, it's now back to you for more on Nationwide. Do enjoy the rest of the day. Many thanks, Abubakar. Now, in a bid to facilitate the signing into law, the Vigilante Group of Nigeria Establishment Bill passed by the National Assembly, but yet to be assented to by President Buhari, leadership of the group, has visited the Deputy Speaker House of Representatives. Kenneth Nanim reports that the Vigilante Group wants the Ninth Assembly to use its cordial relationship to persuade the President to give them a legal backing to complement other security agencies. Welcome, the Deputy Speaker is again receiving another group on solidarity visit for his emergence. This group, however, has more than just a congratulatory message. The Vigilante Group of Nigeria is seeking the intervention of the National Assembly to facilitate the assent to the bill establishing them. The group also believes that presidential assent will strengthen its members to legitimately carry out the assignments, especially in providing adequate intelligence for community policing, now being championed to address security challenges. This crime are organized in local language. A police who does not understand the tradition of local language cannot detect anything. Therefore, if we are recognized by the government and assisted, we could do a lot. Drugs are planted in the community. We know where they are planted. All our members in the 774 local governments are community beings. 
Deputy Speaker Idris Wase appreciated the group for voluntarily complementing security agencies, especially in the Northeast. And I do very much know and aware that the President also is also concerned about security. I would like to first have an engagement with the Clark National Assembly to exactly know exactly what is the issue regarding this bill. The Deputy Speaker also expressed willingness of the National Assembly to explore legislative means to ensure that the operations of the Vigilante Group of Nigeria is backed by law. Kenneth Nanim, NTA News. Minister of Interior Rahuf Arebeshola says the new leadership is set to deliver an exemplary mandate that will enhance the growth of the country. At the maiden meeting with staff of the Interior Ministry, the minister notes that government will not tolerate any form of sabotage or corruption. Solidarity forever. This chant of solidarity by staff of the Ministry of Interior is not for any aggressive movement, but a welcome song for a man they describe as a fellow comrade. With a daunting task of coordinating the internal security architecture, the minister says he is set to rejig the security landscape through collective participation. The security sector has often taken precedence on the to-do list of the President Muhammad Buhari's administration. After all, there can be a meaningful social economic development without the provision of adequate security. We monitor the implementation of those policies by agencies and we call it supervise the implementation of policies, programs, and projects. But all of these are geared towards what? Ensuring safety for Nigerians and security of Nigeria internally. But I can't give any of it without your own cooperation. When it comes to diligent, hard work, tenacity of whatever, the staffs are very willing. In a related development, the former Minister of Interior Lieutenant General Abdurrahman Dambazao called for the cooperation of all the security agencies to ensure that the already laid and structured by the federal government for internal security is sustained. He made the remark at a dinner organized in his honor by the Interior Ministry. Because the challenges will always be there, but if they don't come together and continue to collaborate, to cooperate, uh, then it makes it even more difficult. The event was attended by dignitaries from all walks of life in Abuja, Dui, Dia, and the news. The National Working Committee of the All Progressives Congress has shifted the date for the Biosa governorship primary from Thursday, August 29th to Saturday, August 31st, 2019. In a statement by the party's National Publicity Secretary, Larry Isao Nilu, the party has also adopted the direct mode of primaries in line with the written requests of the Bielsa State Chapter and majority of stakeholders. This, the statement added, is in compliance with the decision of the APC National Executive Committee, which grants state chapters and majority of party leaders in a state the right to decide on the mode of primary they wish to adopt. Let's now join Dibia in our Portacot Network Centers for some stories. Hello, Dibia. And welcome to Portacot. River State Governor in some week says Tim Rivers, winners of the channel's national football competition, will be among the first set of students to be admitted into the State Real Madrid Academy. Governor Wike was speaking shortly after inspecting some ongoing projects in the state. Ogi Dikri completes the report. In the company of some party stalwarts, went inspecting some ongoing projects. Among the projects, the River State Real Madrid Football Academy, the Government Craft Development Center. He appreciated the quality of work. Governor Wike also commended the outlook of Port Harcourt in the last few days. Since the commencement of work by the State Tax Force on Street Trading, Illegal Markets and Motor Parks. Part of the problem we have that people who trade on the streets, and that of course gives uh, defense to, to the entire city. With what we have seen, that they just started yesterday, it means that uh, they will do well. We are going to employ more 450 of our youths 
to be involved in the total operation clean port Accord. He, however, said this first week of the enforcement to sanitize the city serves as a period of grace, stating the state government will start prosecuting offenders in the subsequent weeks. In Port Harcourt, Oge Dinyenkwiri, NTA News. In line with the federal government's diversification drive, Governor Emmanuel Odom of Okwaibom State has restated the resolve of his administration to work towards food sufficiency for export to boost revenue for the state and the country. Governor Odom stated this while flagging off the 2019 second farming season in honor local government area of the state. Susan Asukwo completes the story. Diversification of the economy has been the major thrust of the government at the federal and state levels. This policy thrust has been the major reason Governor Dom Emanuel is emphasizing that appointees in the state should own a farm to ensure food sufficiency and security. The flag off of the 2019 second planting season campaign is one of the steps the state government is taking towards encouraging every Aquaibon person to go back to the farm. He urged farmers to form clusters to boost production of certain crops that will enable government to attract agro-allied industries to the state. If you want to know the easiest pension, the easiest retirement benefit, honestly, is back to the farm. And Apaibo said has the potential to feed herself and also export the excess. High point of the event was presentation of 300,000 Naira checks to 249 graduates of World Bank Agricultural Skills Acquisition Program and planting of cassava stems by the governor and his deputy to mark the commencement of the second season farming campaign in the state. From Ona local government area, Susan Asukwa, NTA News. The Nigerian Navy ship Pathfinder has handed over two thrugs, in addition to three suspects to the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps in alleged illegal oil theft for proper investigation. Kingsley Amadji reports that the suspects were tracked down by men of Operation Delta Safe at two different locations in the state. Officials of Operation Delta Safe tracked down the two trucks laden with adulterated automated gasoline oil otherwise known as AGO and Premium Motor Spirit PMS at Elele and Abajo. The three suspects were subsequently handed over to the headquarters of NSCDC. The trucks were taken to the NNS Pathfinder in Port Harcourt while preliminary investigation into the matter lasted. They were arrested along with three suspects and they were leading with products suspected to be illegally refined PMS and AGO. In line with directives, I am to hand over the two trucks and the products in the trucks to the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps River State Command. With the former handover of the suspects to the NSCDC, operatives of the agency are expected to conclude the investigation into the matter and subsequently charge the suspects to court in line with the harmonized standard operating procedure for security agencies in the country. I received these two trucks from the Nigerian Navy Pathfinder. And I want to assure the general populace that the people found wanting, people that are culpable, will be prosecuted. The Nigerian Navy, NNS Pathfinder in Port Harcourt, warned criminals operating within their area of jurisdiction to stay clear or be prepared to face the law if caught in Port Harcourt, Kingsley, Amajuri, NTA News. And that does it from Port Harcourt. It's back to you for, my, for the rest of the news. Good evening. Thank you, Dibia. Now, talking education, 829,787 candidates that sat for the National Examination Council NECO 2019 June July Senior School Certificate Examination made five credits and above, including English language and mathematics representing 71.59% compared to the 2018 June-July result, indicating an increase of 0.11%. Dawda Mohammed reports that the acting registrar, Chief Executive Abubakar Mohammed Ghana, attributed the success of this year's examination to the deployment of ICT tools to check examination malpractice.
Acting Registrar, Chief Executive, National Examinations Council, NECU, Abubakar Mohamed Ghana, described the increase of the number of registered candidates of 1,163,194 as a result of the downward review of the examination fee by the federal government. The Acting Registrar, however, attributed the rise in cases of examination malpractice to the deployment of biometric verification device and robust monitoring by staff as well as external monitors. The acting chief executive, while commending sister organizations like JAMP, NAPTEP, INEC, and the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps for their support in ensuring the success of this year's examination, called for all hands to be on deck towards ensuring that the Nigerian education system becomes more effective. There is no issue of leakage and we are able to deploy a lot of personnel out and we are able to pay everybody that works for us. The acting registrar employed candidates to access their results on the approved NACO website www.naco.gov.ng only, adding that NACO has abolished the use of cards in all its operations. Out of 76 subjects examined by the National Examination Council, NACO, Mathematics recorded the highest incidence in malpractice, with 7,922 recorded incidents of various forms of malpractice, an indication that mathematics is still feared among students in the country. In Mina, Dauda Mohammed, NTA News. Oyo State Governor Sheyi Makinde is rolling out plans for a functional and qualitative education that would engineer processes of sustainable development in the state. He said this while declaring open the 34th Conference of the Association of Vice Chancellors of Nigerian Universities held at the University of Ibadan. Ayomiku Ajibola has the report. Meeting the poor state of education in Oyo State before it took over, Governor Shilema Kili noted that his administration will revisit an MOU signed with the University of Ibada to improve quality in the state education sector. The governor also reiterated his commitment to maintain a budgetary allocation for education in line with the UNESCO standard and assured people that his administration remain open to support partnership and synergy with the University of Ibada for quality control. Functional and qualitative education is needed to achieve on his part, the host vice chancellor decried the shortfall in funding Nigeria University as a cause for great distress to the growth of the system. The public classes are characterized by a stable academic calendar, largely on account of incessant disagreement between staff unions and management and of proprietor. This has made our public universities largely unattractive to foreign students. The conference, according to him, will allow academia share ideas on how the problem confronting Nigeria universities could be addressed and put in perspective. In Ibadan, Ayomiku Achibola, NC News. Governor El Rufai meets 14-year-old Oxford University graduates. Rukeya in Kaduna will tell us who this teenager is and more stories from that soon. Good to see you, Rukeya. Former, welcome to Kaduna. Efforts at ensuring that children who drop out of school are reintegrated in the system for a better future dominated discussion when an orphan who enrolled in Oxford University at the age of six met Governor Nasser Ahmed El Rufai at the government house Kaduna. Muhammad Umar Ajinki reports. 14 year old Joshua Beckford from United Kingdom is the youngest child who enrolled in Oxford University at the age of six. He graduated at the age of 14 with a distinction in philosophy and history. The young graduate met with Governor Nasrul Ahmed Erufai to explore ways of inspiring children in Nigeria, not to lose hope, especially in education pursuits. I have over 14 different awards from different events, and I also have a Lifetime Achievement Award from when I was 12 years old. So I'm 14 years old now. Joshua is currently working with Farm Swamp Foundation in Kaduna State to build a community secondary school at Tafa Village. Seeing someone like him that looks like any other young man roaming the streets in Nigeria, uh, getting into Oxford University is very inspiring. And we need examples like that to encourage our young people to know that the sky is not their limit, it's just the beginning. 
Governor Nasr Ahmad Erufai said government will do the needful to ensure children of the less privileged get the best education in the state. Joshua Beckford is expected to attend the annual Low Income Family Education Life Support Summit in Lagos, targeted at inspiring more Nigerian children. In Kaduna, Reconstruction of Abuja Kaduna Keno Highway remains one of the most cheering news to millions of motorists who ply the road that serves as a gateway to about five states in northern Nigeria. The development will certainly reduce travel time and guarantee comfort to travelers when completed. Observers, however, say the indiscriminate parking of articulated vehicles at Marabanjos along the Kaduna Zaria axis remains a major issue on the route. Abdullahi Muhammad tells us more. This place is popularly known as Maraban Joss, and this is coined as a result of this road diversion which leads traffic to Joss, the Plateau State capital. The original name of the host community is Katabu, and it has over the years come to be a very popular stopover for truck drivers who come from across the country. It is a location that provides all the kinds of convenience that a truck driver needs on transit. A fix to the tires, engine, body works, as well as lubrication and refuels. In the middle of all these, area of small businesses thrive, expanding the frontiers of the community with many of its indigents engaged. The truck drivers have found the wide shoulders of the road as a reliable parking spot and a relaxing point. Why do you like stopping here? Yes, because if I start from Tapa, I don't get a place where I'm going to stop to eat uh, unless I reach this place. They are convenience, but to the detriment of other motorists who sometimes become trapped for hours in traffic congestion as a result of indiscriminate parking by the truck drivers. Many were involved in accidents caused by the trucks while negotiating a U-turn or a sudden decision to stop. Suleiman Abubakar Waziri will not forget in a hurry his experience at Marbanjas. He had a horrible accident within that axis. A man crossing the road who was carrying water on wheelbarrow, he jumped onto the road. While I was trying to escape him, Another trailer was trying to reverse on that very highway. We went under. I lost my consciousness. Not only that the truck driver's activities often cause accidents and traffic congestion, the environment is filthy. Third roads within the U-turns have failed as a result of pressure from the activities of the articulated trucks. The works on the trailer park being constructed by the Kaduna State Government is still ongoing. Motorists will have to put up with the inconveniences arising from parking articulated vehicles at Maraban Joss for some time to come. In Kaduna, Abdullah Mohammed, NT News. And one aspect of the National Youth Service Corps scheme is contributing to positive transformation of their host communities. In Jagawa State, the Community Development Scheme is touching positively on spheres of human existence. Ibrahim Balagunda in this report takes a look at how the program is addressing the needs of the people. 46 years ago, the National Youth Service Corps scheme was conceived as a pivot for national unity and integration as core members are deployed to states other than theirs to experience other cultures and appreciate Nigeria's diversity. From the inception of the scheme to date, one of the components of the program that has continued to make NYC visible and relevant across Nigeria is the Community Development Service. During the one-year national service, core members live among their host communities to identify with them and, in due course, come up with community development projects and programs that have direct bearing on the people. I took it upon myself as a challenge, went to the village, taught these women, over a hundred women, soap making, disinfectant, hair and body cream. In Jigawa State, we have witnessed a uh, tremendous achievement in the, uh, in the execution of the CDS activities. They also provide furniture. They also provide books. It now becomes clearer 
how community development services impact pay on rural communities and give core members the opportunity to utilize the challenges which rural development poses and inculcate leadership capacity as well as patriotism on the youth. In Duse, Ibrahim Benlogunda, NTA News. And that's it from Kaduna. It's back to Ifoma in Abuja for continuation of Nationwide. Thank you, Rukeya. Nationwide continues after this break. Please don't go away. <laughs> The ancestors were taken away as slaves. Now, they return as kings and queens on a pilgrimage back to the motherland. The third door of return ceremony, Diaspora Festival Badagri, Lagos, Nigeria, takes place in Badagri from the 15th to the 20th of October, 2019. <laughs> For details of participation and sponsorship, contact the following. Website, adore.ng. The African Door of Return Experience. Don't miss it. Brought to you by the African Door of Return Experience Initiative in collaboration with the Nigerians in Diaspora Commission and the African Renaissance Foundation. Chief host, the Lagos State Government. Thanks for being there. We are not done with President Buhari's activities at the ongoing Tokyo International Conference on African Development, as President Mohamed Buhari has attributed the partial closure of Nigeria's brother with Benin Republic to the massive smuggling activities, especially of rice taking place on that corridor. In a statement by the Presidential Advisor on Media and Publicity, Femi Adesino says the Nigerian leader gave the reason during an audience granted his Benin counterpart, Patrice Talon, on the margins of the 7th Tokyo International Conference for African Development, Tikat 7, in Yokohama, Japan, on Wednesday. The president, who expressed great concern over the smuggling of rice, said it threatened the self-sufficiency already attained due to his administration's agricultural policies. The Nigerian president said the limited closure of the country's western border was to allow Nigeria's security forces develop a strategy on how to stem the dangerous trend and its wider ramifications. Responding to the concerns raised by President Talon on the magnitude of suffering caused by the closure, President Buhari said he had taken note and would reconsider reopening in no too distant future. Earlier, President Talon has said he called on the Nigerian president as a result of the severe impact the closure of the Nigerian border was having on his people. Similarly, President Buhari also received in audience President Cyril Ramaphosa of South Africa, during which issues of common bilateral relations, especially the killings of Nigerians in South Africa, were discussed. The matter will be further examined during the Nigerian leader's official visit to Pretoria in October 2019. And Ayodeji Makinde has the latest on sports updates. Youth and Sports Development Minister Sunday Dare says there will be more focus on grassroots sports talent discovery and youth empowerment nationwide. The minister disclosed this during an inspection visit of Ahmadu Bello Stadium in Kaduna while assuring on government's determination to improve on deteriorating sports facilities in the country. The ministry is working on a business model that will be enticing to the private investors that want to partner with uh, the Ministry for Sports Development. Nigeria's men's senior basketball team, D Tigers, have arrived the city of Wuhan, China, where they will be playing their Group B matches at the FIBA Men's World Cup. The Alex Nwora coached team will face Russia on Saturday before meeting Argentina and South Korea. Meanwhile, Nigerians are optimistic of better outing for D Tigers in China. They have what it takes to actually go all the way in the World Cup, but we're not losing hope on the D Tigers. We know that they would go there and make us proud. In tennis, 18 time Grand Slam champion Rafael Nadal powered through to the second round of the US Open after an emphatic 6 3 6 2 6 to defeat of Australian John Millman on Wednesday. 
In the women's category, Russian Anna Kalinskaya defeated 11th seed and 2017 champion Sloane Stevens of the USA in straight sets 6-3-6-4 to reach the second round. With sports updates, Ayodeji, making the NTA News. And that concludes Nationwide for today. Thank you for watching.